Straight ahead on the drift, we've got outboard starting tips from Boat US that'll keep you running this season. We see what goes into the keel up build of a Down East cruiser. Also, we'll take you to a marina's fun, illuminating evening. Plus, how important is a float plan? Towboat US Captain Clint Allen is here to let you know. All this and a whole lot more is right around the bend, this time on The Drift. Hello and welcome to The Drift. I'm your host, Sierra Goodwill. One of the many things that make New England special is its rich boat building history. On our boat build segment, John Methia spends some time at South Shore Boat Works to see what goes into a keel up down east cruiser build. Bob, anybody who knows me knows that I love a down east design. And this. We call it the Gurnet Point 25. Beautiful boat. And so, but it's, it's uh, based on a down east lobster boat. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so Jamie Lowell is a, a sixth generation designer of lobster boats. Um, it was 25 and a half feet long. What makes this boat interesting is the fact that uh, up in the bow sections, there has a lot of um, flare. Right. Which uh, it's, it's more than just there for, uh, for form. This flare in here. Yes, it has a lot it's of gonna flare. It's going to smack the water down. It, what it does is it's a, that flare uh, peels the water off mm -hmm. as, as, we're, as you're going through. And it's instead of needing a spray rail, it, because most boats of this size are wet, right. the flare peels the water mm -hmm. and it just knocks it down. Uh, and, and that's what the, that's, that's, that's what's a characteristic of, of uh, the Lowell designs, is that they're made to have the flare. But as you're going along the boat. Yeah, I can see. If you come down this way, you see this little curve, and that must uh, address this sort of a following sea, that, that curve. It does. Uh, that, that curve, the, re the reverse curve mm -hmm. at the transom is called, um, a, uh, called tumble home. And what that does, it, it's not just for, it's not just there for looks. It's there to knock down, uh, takes away the wave energy as you're going through a following or a quarterly sea. So say, say what it's called again. It's called so a tumble home. Tumble home, this curve in. Yes. Right. I always thought that was just for aesthetics, just something cool. But so you've got that curve. So following the sea, water coming from the stern just gets channeled in. Right. And, and down. And, and in, in the Lowell designs, their design their boats are designed to go through the water instead of having to get up on plane. So what's surprising is this is not a slow boat. We've built them that have gone up to 32 knots hmm. and uh, always under control. Now are you, what, what's your plan for the sides here? Is it going to be an open side? Are you going to put a trap pull on this or where is it going? Well this is going to be used recreationally for, mm -hmm. uh, for fishing as well as for lobstering. So this is going to have a folding side where it folds okay. up into the roof. Mm -hmm. So a panel will just fold up. Yep. It gives you access for fishing and lobstering and then folds down and secure yes. when needed. Yep. So let's go, uh, let's go above. Okay. So Bob, this boat is your boat. It right? is. After all Not these... Not for sale? Is that the name of it? <laughs> well, I think my wife might get upset if I sell, sell the boat that, that she's been... Uh, involved in building. Uh, it's, it's primarily a day boat, although um, it's set up to have B bursts and a head, and it's going to have a galley up, uh, okay. which would be nice because that way you can entertain. And What will power her? Uh, it, it's going to have a I mean, 230 horsepower nanny mm -hmm. diesel. This is a fiberglass hull, mm -hmm. but it has foam coring in it. Uh, foam, foam coring in the hull. It's a uh, it's called a divinicel foam. It's a closed cell foam. Okay. And what the advantage of putting the foam in is it makes the boat very stiff. So that gives, that helps in preventing, essentially twisting of the hull. It does, yeah. Great. It's a fantastic boat, Bob. Well, thank you. How many of these can you spit out for us? Because you're going to get the calls. <laughs> I, I might, yes. Be ready for it. <laughs> well, everything we do here is, is custom, so Understood. It's, it's in all what the customer wants. 
We'll be following the build process as that Down East cruiser gets closer to cruising. Find more boat build at driftsociably.com and on our social platforms at Drift Sociably. Straight ahead on the drift, it's the Boat US Pros at the helm with helpful starting tips. And we drift into a lively Massachusetts marina. And what's to love about this $8.5 million baby? Mr. Yachts shows us straight ahead this time on the drift. At the helm is brought to you by Boat US. Better boating starts here. Okay, so we've all been there. You get to your boat, turn the key, get the beep, then nothing happens. This time on At The Helm with Boat US, we have three simple steps to assess why that outboard won't start and how to hopefully fix it fast. You get to the boat, you turn the key, you hear the beep, you turn the key the rest of the way and nothing happens? Whoa, well don't freak out just yet people, okay? Because today we're gonna to talk about three KISS methods of troubleshooting what happens when you turn the key on your outboard powered boat and it doesn't start? There are a couple really simple fixes that actually account for the vast majority of the experiences like this. People, I'm Lenny Rudeau and I'm here for Boat US. Now, you probably have Boat US, if you don't, you should. And now uh, before you call them to come and help you get your boat started, remember to try these three things, okay? Because a lot of the time, they're gonna work. This right here is probably the most common problem. These engines will not start because these shifters are not in neutral. Ah, now, yep, that's the trick. Now, what you gotta remember is, as throttles age, sometimes these get a little finicky. It may feel and look like they're in neutral. So if you go to turn the key, it doesn't start. The first thing you wanna do is just jiggle them back and forth a little bit, make sure they're in there. In some cases, you can even get an engine started by turning the key while you jiggle. Now, if that's the situation for you, that's great. You get it started, you go home. Uh, before you take out the boat again, take it in and have that fixed. Now, let's say you turn the key, the engine cranks, but it won't start. First thing you go to is the ball in the fuel line. Did you pump it to prime that motor up? If you haven't, Give it a few squeezes, pump on that thing until it gets hard, you can feel the pressure in it. The third thing to check out is the kill switch lanyard. Aha, now I bet it turns over. Yep. If that little clip is not installed properly, those engines will not run. And that's the third really common way that People get flummoxed when they go to start their outboard and nothing will happen. Maybe, you know, somebody else took this out when they were looking, maybe during the cleanup, the last time they used the boat, it got pulled out. Uh, maybe they just forgot to install it, whatever. If for whatever reason, this little clip is not properly clipped underneath of that little red button, this boat's going nowhere. Thanks, Lenny. It's always best to try the simple fixes first and if those don't work, I can call you, right? I think I have your number here somewhere. And for more at the helm with Boat US tips and tricks, visit BoatUS.com because better boating starts with Boat US. Okay, you know, it's my favorite. It's time for Drift Into. And today we drift into West Island Marina on Buzzards Bay in Fairhaven, Massachusetts for an illuminating experience. It's repaired, it's ready to go. Nah, uh, not really repaired, but... Hey, you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> The folks at West Island Marina sure know how to light up the night. It's a tradition, and every year they theme out their boats. Serve up awesome food and drink. There you go. That's good. I told you that's good. And light it all up for a great time. It's a delicious dockside food and drink buffet as each boater serves up their own signature refreshments. This is a good one. <laughs> and there's some bit of friendly competition with the gold going to the oh, best themed boat. <laughs> they have a good dancing, dancing elves on the dock and everything. 
How hot do you chocolate. Beat that? Why not work an illumination night into your marina? And if you do, let us know about it and maybe, just maybe, we'll drift into it. Go ahead and get your marina glowing. Guaranteed a great time for all. And there are more Drift Into destinations at DriftSociably.com and at DriftSociably on social media. Like, follow, share, subscribe, and Drift Sociably with us. It's 102 feet long and it puts the super in super yacht. Our own Mr. Yachts has exclusive access. And the importance of a float plan. Is it critical? Towboat U.S. Captain Clint Allen has the answer right here on The Drift. The Drift podcast can be found at driftsociably.com. And now our host, John Methia, sits down with those in the know of the boating industry, talking tips and tech, fun and sun. We call it From the Cast, always an informative slice from the Drift podcasts. And today, John spends some time with towboat U.S. Captain Clint Allen to talk about the importance of a float plan. Captain Clint Allen of Towboat U.S. Captain, it's always great to have you. And we're going to talk about something pretty serious right now. And something a lot of folks don't do, which is filing a float plan. Talk about what that is. So pretty, pretty important. Uh, we have a lot of uh, our members that call us and, and file mm -hmm. with us. It's a service that we offer. But basically, it's telling you where you're going to go. Okay. Or telling us, telling someone mm -hmm. where you're going to go, when and you expect to be back. Mm -hmm and how many people on board, uh, contact numbers, boat right. description, make, color, year, sure. MS numbers, and uh, basically a time that you're gonna be back in the, in the area. So and, this is if, so often we see these situations where um, there's, a, there's a kayak found, or there's a boat found, or there's a car left somewhere, and, mm -hmm. and, and family members are wondering, did he, did he go out on the boat? What time was he supposed to come back? He hasn't come back yet. Right. Um, if there was a plan, and, and, and we're not talking about a five-page form that you have to fill out here, right? We're talking about just sort of letting somebody know, letting a family right. member know, letting another boater at the marina know. You know, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah, the What's official up? form, you can download it right off of uh, BoatUS.com mm -hmm. and get the, their float plan right from there. Uh, it's one page. I don't know, maybe 15 questions, something like that. Or you can do a lesser one. We have people call our office and, and just tell us where they're going to go fish for the day offshore. They're going to the Fingers, mm -hmm. for example, and they're going to be back at uh, 1800 the problem with that, though, is they, they, uh, they've called us, they've notified us, unless they call me at 1815. Right, you don't know. Right. So I have f several fellas that do it when they go offshore, and they're all very, very, uh, always call me. I'm mm -hmm. back in town, you know, where, where it, Gay Head, for example, will be in in an hour. So I, I didn't realize that. So that's sort of a, is that sort of a service that, Tobo U.S. provides, or is that, do, well, do all do all Tobo captains? Most Tobo do U.S. That companies you? will offer it. Yeah, if you oh, call me, we'll file. You can file right with me and do your. Uh, we'll log it all in. And we've seen this happen a lot, where somebody doesn't file a float plan, and a loved one might think something has happened to them because they're delayed, and they. Uh, Pull the hook, so to speak. Mm, right. Call right. the Coast Guard, yeah. call the Navy, and call that the is local sort of authorities. The for the float plan to avoid right. all of that. Yeah. The best practice is, is with a family member and uh, communication is key. So as I said, if you if your plans are gonna change, you need to notify. Right. And then contact them if you had if you got delayed, if you had right. engine trouble, if you had, you know, if you spent a little too much time there at the uh, little marina bar across, right. The, right. across the bay. You can't you know? leave someone, if you file a plan, you have <laughs> yeah. to be loyal to yeah. it. You can't forget Darn. that you filed it. And... I had that last, um, let's say, ice water there. And I had spent <laughs> right. a little too much time right. here. I, 45 minutes I thought goes I told by. Clint <laughs> I was going to be back at 7 and it's 10.15. Yeah. You get a form. You can get this information at uh, BoatUS.com mm -hmm. and, and reach out to Towboat if you need more of this information. 
you fill out the form and then um, give it to a loved one mm -hmm. or give a towboat captain a call and sure. just say where you're yeah. going, what, yeah. you, what you're up to. I'm going out with five guys. We right. Plan and to like you said year. earlier, I don't want to be babysitting. Right. So if right. I happen to get two float pans filed with me, mm -hmm. You need to do your end of the bargain, and, sure. and if you told me you're going to be home at six, let me know that you're you know you're back in the area, mm -hmm. everything's okay, and okay. and or earlier or later. Sure. But you can't go much later because if I'm doing my duty, I'm going to say, gee, he told me he was going to be back at six, right, seven fifteen. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. All right, Clint Allen, more great information. File a float plan, mm -hmm. file it. Give it to someone. Yeah. Don't leave it on the boat. Right. Right. <laughs> Don't forget to call them back. I did a float plan, back. but right. uh, I forgot to tell anybody, and right. I left it right. on the boat. Make Real sure you important. get it to someone. And most importantly, um, let let that person know when you return. Right. Yeah. As soon as you get back in the area, and it's become routine. Valuable information as always there, Clint. And remember to file that plan the next time you head out. And remember to follow the Drift Podcast at driftsociably.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, Drifters. The Drift comes to you from our sociable DGI communication studios. Get the Drift. Our own Mr. Yachts, Nick Cardoza, is spending some time in Florida with the founder of Alpha Custom Yachts, aboard this 102-foot, $8.5 million beauty. Guys, I just came up here to see this new Alpha 102 Spritz. Now, Alpha is a newcomer to the super yacht market coming out of Turkey, one of the world's top yacht producing countries. They've taken a lot of design cues from actual super yacht owners and applied them to their entire product line. Let's go have a look. The way this boat's been designed on the aft deck is like a huge beach boat, right? When you're on another boat, I mean, you can tell the difference how, how this is designed, right? Normally, boats aren't this big in the back. What I'd point out about this boat is that your salon area is actually to maximize the usable space in the salon area because a lot of times you walk in, you've got like a couch area, then you've got a big dining room area, then you've got the galley, and then you get your home station. So what we've done here, we've actually kept the, the dining room table al fresco outside, which you can take more advantage of the space, right? Outside, you've got a great wet bar here with a big, deep refrigerator. We have an ice box here and another one in the fly. Wow, yeah, that's great. Ice boxes are, are amazing, but I love them. You know why? <laughs> People, you have a boat and you have like a big cooler all the time, right? Oh, like, you want to have an ice box. They don't put enough ice boxes. You want to see a lot of ice? I want to see a lot of ice. Show me a lot of ice. Oh, wow, you got a commercial ice maker in this thing. Producing. Look at the size of these cubes, man. 90 kilos per day Look at this. real ice. Wow. Wow. And then, guys, check this out. A lot of smart stuff on this boat. I'll take you down below real quick. You've got two twin cabins. Two queen cabins. And then you've got your master bedroom here, which is absolutely beautiful. It's well laid out, low to the water, and lots of light. Look how it seals. Look at the silence when it closes. Wow. And you feel as though, I mean, you actually- it Seals. You actually don't hear anything in here now. It's like, you feel like you've got- Total like a, silence. Total silence. Uh, tell me a little bit about like the, how the, the build is. Uh, so the whole living area is, is isolated from the hole. There is no contact, no solid contact from the, from all the living area to the hull of the boat. So that's, that's why you have no transmission of noise or vibration. Yeah, it's an extremely silent boat. I love the stonework throughout the boat. See how they match all the stonework here? I mean, unbelievable. Like every square inch of this boat is like a different texture, a different color. You've got the, the, the stitched leather paneling here that's gray. Going up the stairs, it's red.
continuity throughout the boat, but it's not the same stuff. It's not boring. You know, we've got nice red going up this, the stairwell. Look at the shape of the windows here, right? This is all custom stuff. But listen, you can hang out and talk to your captain without having to go down below. Big table, huge bar area, nice stone countertops, another bar area here. And again, as a flybridge, the boat is huge. But nice little bow area up here. You can walk through the middle of the table. So everybody's hanging out here. It's a good area to be chilling, you know? We love it. Well, drifters, that's it for this time. As always, thanks for joining us at The Social Place for Boating, The Drift. For more content like this, like, follow, share, and subscribe to The Drift at Drift Sociably, or visit us at driftsociably.com. For all of us here at The Drift, I'm Sierra Goodwill, Drift Sociably. Get The Drift? The Drift has been brought to you by Boat US. Better boating starts here. Join today.